It's easy to hear your favorite artist on WFPK from wherever you are. Listen on your smart speaker, live stream from our website at WFPK.org, from Louisville Public Media. Consequence Podcast Network. And welcome to another edition of Kyle Meredith with the interview series presented by WFPK at WFPK.org. Consequence of Sounds and the Consequence Podcast Network. Big hello to everybody who uh, checks us out, however often you check it out. Of course, we put new uh, interviews out every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So if you're a subscriber and you listen, always appreciate, always grateful for that. If you're not, maybe you're just, uh, you found this interview, you're checking in. Maybe you check us out every now and then. Whatever the case, glad you're here. Uh, And if you do want to subscribe, of course, you can find us at all of the usual spots, iTunes and Apple Podcasts, at Spotify, YouTube, really wherever you get podcasts from. Just type in Kyle Meredith with subscribe take care of the rest from there. I'm Kyle Meredith and today my guest is Jerry Cinnamon. Going to be talking with the Scottish sensation about his brand new record, his sophomore solo record called The Bonnie. Now of course uh, to know his music you're probably also going to know his story. This is a you know, he's a Scottish musician that has been in the scene for, for a while now. You know, he was in bands in the uh, in the 2000s, but in the 2010s, he jumps out, he goes solo, and he starts building this organic fan base in Scotland that suddenly starts bridging all over the UK. Becomes, uh, if not the first, one of the first musicians to ever do a stadium tour in the UK totally independent. He's been doing this as a DIY thing, uh, which is amazing. And and you'll hear why in the music. So we're going to be talking about getting this kind of organic success in his 30s, how that might have been different if it happened when he was younger, Uh, if there were any pressures to follow up what was a very big debut over in the UK, and of course, being as DIY as possible. Uh, Then for the songwriting, he said a few interesting quotes. There's one that gets brought up in a lot of interviews, the war for real music. I want to know what that means as he elaborates on the art of songwriting that gets lost. He's going to name a couple really interesting uh, inspirations. Uh, Reservoir Dogs. In in fact, the very famous ear-cutting scene in Reservoir Dogs, yes, has inspired how he deals with his career, as has Neil Young's Powderfinger for two very different reasons, though. And the latter really gets into his style of lyrics, uh, a very poetic style of lyrics that, that Jerry has. And I'll be asking about a few of the songs, too. One of them deals with uh, insomnia. And in fact, specifically within this song about being awake for three days on end, something he says he's done multiple times throughout his life. So I kind of want to hear about uh, what that experience is like as well. So let's get into this and talk about this record, The Bunny. It's Kyle Meredith with Jerry Cinnamon. What's happening? Let me compliment you because this this record with the Bonnie, it's it's. I mean, there's so many good things happening, and and I know, obviously I'm not the only one who thinks this because uh, the acclaim that's coming, and and you know, f- even just the past few years, but especially with this record too, it's been so cool to to see what you've done and how you've done it. I I don't know if you feel like the story starts to overshadow the songs at all. But, you know, I, I do want to compliment you because the songs are fantastic. So, Cheers, man. I'm out my bus here. You can, <laughs> you can carry on with that if you want. <laughs> uh, the the storyline doesn't really... The story doesn't really overshadow anything because I don't really do interviews. But the narrative... Like, I wish the, I wish the narrative was kind of stronger, but I don't really like talking about myself because there's enough people talking about me. So the narrative just kind of spirals out of control where people just... Making stuff up, but that's you know that's that's what I do wonder because when you've got all of that attention coming at you, and especially from that first record and and the way it happened, although organically, you know, you go into this record and and were there pressures involved, and and how did you and was it a challenge to stay true to your vision? Yes, I know. I've got no. I'm still. I've got no ambitions really to do anything for music. I'm still kind of yeah. stuff as separate as possible from the industry. So there was never any question of, oh, let's now try and get something. Like, let's try and get a number one. Or let's try and get. Let's try and make it. Like I could have, tar- I could have went to a big producer and got the songs all tarted up and and made them massive and tried to, and went down the kind of mainstream route. But I've got no interest in it to be honest. I don't really get what people. I think if you want to be, if you want to be famous. I think that's a bit. I'm suspicious of you. You're either too young to know what it means, or you're a so. <laughs> so 
I was getting no interest whatsoever. Because you 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 are, I think, fortunate in in that you are seeing success uh, later in life in your thirties. I don't want to make it sound you're <laughs> later in life. You and I are about the same age, by the way. So, you know, I I, I understand how that part goes, but. Do you think you would have handled it differently had this happened, you know, when when you were still playing in bands in in, in the mid two thousands? Do you think you would have it would have been different for you? Oh, def- I'd be dead. I wouldn't have made it past the first album. I'd, I'd definitely went off the rails more than I have done. <laughs> you know what I mean? But now I've kind of I've completed that part of my life. I still like a party, but I'm trying to. I think it's more. I can respect the fact more that you just get the job done, and then then you can, you can earn the party. I was I was trying to th- remember a uh, a quote, and I feel like it might have been like John Entwistle from the Who, or or one of the Zeppelin guys, or something like that. But they they were talking about how it, that happened for them, like like by the time they finally did find like actual success and fame, they were they were too old to squandered way in the same way <laughs> you know so I exactly oh, there's still plenty of time for me to squander it all away don't get me wrong but <laughs> I've just I've, I've got no I've got no interest in it you know what I mean? all I want to do is get the songs out that's that's been the main thing I've got a backlog of songs that I just want recorded I in an office surrounded with paperwork just trying to get it all done and then every time I try and record like I try and do another record I end up rather than doing what I'm supposed to be doing I end up writing another three songs and then it just it's a cycle that goes on and on and on. Well, that's a uh, you know, how much how much were you able to kind of uh, split that and like for this record, you know, because you do you have a long career of, of writing songs and a lot of them I'm sure most of the world hasn't heard yet. So do you take that opportunity to say you know what I've got a handful of these songs that really deserve to be heard? I can pull them up. I mean, do, do a lot of these songs stretch back that far, or were you able to start with a clean slate? Oh no. It's- Trying to get the songs because the songs I, I released, I used to release them for, for free, and then and, and I pulled them all. I used to put them all on SoundCloud, and a lot of my friends have have, have heard them. So it's a lot of it is pulled down to my friends just saying, "Go and bring the music out, go and hurry up and bring those songs out." You know what I mean? But a lot of the songs that I've that the songs are written at different different things in life. So that's why the albums kind of read kind of autobi- autobiographical. The it's kind of like a journey. Because the songs, some of the songs are written like ten years ago, five years ago, and then you've got the other ones that I've been writing while I've been recording the album, and then I try them out live, and then people want to hear them. So it's it's like trying to meet the demand. There's never been a kind of an agenda to let's try and go on the radio or let's try and do this or that. It's always let's just try and record these songs and get my pals off my back. <laughs> <laughs> Did the songs change very much from how they've been represented over the years to this this version now that we've received on this album? Were there much changes through those? No, not really. To be honest, the, no. I've tried. I was considering going down the route again, like getting the songs. It wasn't even a consideration, but I could, there was the option I make a big route and changing how I record. I, I usually record with my with my mate. I build the studio myself. I try and do everything myself, and it kind of. That's the kind of ethos of it. Without thinking about it, I don't really think about it too much, but I try and do everything myself. And that means you've got, it's only yourself to blame if it goes wrong. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> and I think that keeps, there's a, dis- there's a distance between, if you've got the songs in your in your heart, in your head, and then there's a distance between that idea in your head and the listener. So you're trying to close that gap. And the more people you put in the middle of it, the, the, more, the more kind of convoluted it becomes. So I try and shorten that distance. And that's and we've ended up where we are. So. Well, that's one of the most impressive things that I think I first realized uh, about this music too was because when you can, it's unfair to ever compare music, but when you put this up against most any other thing that I could hear that's brand new, what I hear is how uh, musically simple you've chosen to to make these songs. They're sparse. There's not a lot of instrumentation. You know, a lot of times it's it's you and a guitar. Maybe, you know, there's a, a, a beat coming behind you. But it's it's very little instrumentation. Um, and, and that's impressive because of how people have grabbed onto that uh, specifically. I mean, I, I think there's a quote that you said that, you know, a war for real music. And I think you're right. I think yeah. you're right. It's, it's true, like... I get asked about that quite a lot. The, the what for real music? When, when I'm when I'm talking about that, I'm meaning the art of songwriting gets lost. Well, how many people are artists get signed and they get given ten writers and told what to, told what to say, told how to dress, told how to told how to write, told how to sing? Like there's there's definitely a disconnect. 
and there's 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 so many bands that you see, especially the bands, they've only got a small window of time in order to to get their music out before things start going tits up, before people start getting too drunk or start having children or, or they have to go and work in jobs. So there, there's songs and there's bands that you'll never ever hear, you'll never ever do anything because that that window is closed for them. They, they, they keep they keep the strip back thing is to is to try and is to is to try and keep the connection. How would I explain it? The idea was: Have you all seen Reservoir Dogs? Oh yeah, yeah. The movie. Do you remember the bit where where, it, where it, it cuts his ear off? Uh huh. <laughs> the policeman's ear off. It's one. It's meant to be one of the most. Uh, stay with me here. The mad thing about that scene is you don't actually see the actual scene. It's your imagination that plays. A lot of people remember it as being like a kind of horror time scene, but you don't actually see it. It doesn't happen. It's your imagination, does it? So when I when I strip back the songs, I'm trying to leave it up to the listener to finish the song. So when you sing the song along in your head, or you're singing it yourself in the house, or when you're at the live gigs and everybody sings the song together and they kind of come together, that's when it's finished. That's when the song makes. The idea was to make. Because I don't have a band. The idea is to make the crowd or the listener part of the band. Yeah, I don't know if it's how it's coming across, but that's the. That's where it comes from. Mm. Well, first off, let me say that the the fact that you just tied that all into Reservoir Dogs is uh, <laughs> pretty amazing. <laughs> and, and two, and I know I'm 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 missing I, I'm I'm sliding by the entire point you just made. But if you ever cover this song that's uh, you know stuck in the middle with you that uh, is featured in that part, I think uh, jackpot will have been had. Uh, the circle of life complete. Oh, I love that. I'm sure the the, the is that Jerry Rafferty on it. That thing stuck in Steelers Wheel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Steelers Wheel. Right. Mm-hmm. He's not even in the video because he, he had no interest in being in the video. It's the, the other guy that's in the video because he couldn't be asked. He, he didn't want to take anything to do with it because it was j- just about the music. I've always respected that. That's just a side note. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. interesting. I want to hit on the lyrics too. You know, w- with all of this uh, front and center. I mean, that's that that th- these are the stories that we're listening to. There's so much poetry uh, in in every single line. It seems like you're going for a, an entire poem. Uh, that can't be an easy thing to do. Does that type of writing come from anywhere specific for you? I mean, was do you have a poetry background, or is that just is that something natural? I've always loved poetry, but there's no really. I don't know anybody that's got a job as a poet. You know what I mean? <laughs> there's no much. Yeah, uh, I've seen. I've, I've, like one major inspiration is Neil Young. Was I don't know if you've ever heard a song called Powder Finger. Oh right, there's yeah. A song called Powder Finger. It's 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 like a movie. Have you ever heard of the word laconic? So it comes from, supposedly, it comes from the Spartans, where they, they, they used to just cut to the chase. They used to give, it's it's a style of speaking where you, you convey, or in this case writing, where you convey the most amount of information with the least amount of words. So it's a, an art form within itself. And Neil Young and the song Powder Finger, there's not that many words, but it, it, and within the song, it, it tells you a, a complete movie. So it's born kind of from that, where I try and convey, obviously with melody, and then you try and convey the most amount of information with the least amount of words. So it comes across as kind of simplistic, but it's an art form within itself. That's what I've been trying to do. But you also, you have to have within that to give it depth, if you're not writing as many as many words, you have to try and put in some double meanings and, and you need to be clever with your, with your mel- you need to do things with the melody and with the words. And if you can kind of merge them together, then it ends up what it is. That's what I'm, tr- that's what I'm, tr- that's what I'm trying to do anyway. I try, I try and do it where the songs just write themselves in that sense. So if there's a song just bobbing about in my head, I'll put it on the back burner until it writes its, until, and I won't listen to any until, and if the song just keeps popping into my head, that means there's something to it. And then the song's kind of born from that. With a lot of these lyrics, it does sound like you're talking directly, like, like, there's obviously probably some autobiography uh, autobiography happening in a lot of the songs and, and maybe it is the time that we're in you know where where a lot of us are looking to hear something uh, to to get something for ourselves in the song but would i be far off with saying that you really are going for inspiration to to inspire people with some of these words beyond y- your own personal story yes and no like Cantor, for example, like a lot Cantor was me talking to myself. It was the the lyrics in it are uh, the chorus. It says the hardest part of the game isn't even playing the game. It's caring enough to care about the things that you're doing. Like that stemmed from a conversation I always have with my mate about making plans. Like no matter what you're doing, if you make a plan, things and then do all the small things that it would take to get 
to the end of the plan, you'll be in a better place regardless. So the, the original lyrics were the hardest part of the plan isn't even doing the plan. It's caring enough to care about doing the plan. So it's really it's about talking to myself. But when I was younger, I used to listen to certain songs that gave me a bit of guidance. I've always been looking for a little bit of gold in songs. And if I can lace, if there's things that I've learned that have helped me, like canter, maybe that can help other people. Do you know what I mean? And, it, and the messages I get are people that say that it has helped them, then it's it's worked. And it, even if it helps one person, then that's what music's all about, isn't it? It's not the end goal, but it's you, you may as well. Do you know what I mean? Like, why why wouldn't you? Well, I, I know there are... On, on some of the more direct statements on the record, and, and, and I say direct uh, as they become on this record, but a song like Every Man's Truth, <laughs> because I, I know what I'm getting out of this song, you know, I, I and, and I, I will speak for me personally, I won't project onto you, uh, but you know, when I hear this song, it, it is about those just crazy, crazy stuff that you hear mostly on the web. You know, and 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 it it does hit, sound like you're hitting on the round earthers on this, and the uh, conspiracy theorists. You bring up the kin tra- chemtrails and everything. Would you mind talking a little bit about what inspired that song for you? It's about people being in their bubbles. Like, how many people do you meet? Like, it doesn't matter whether it's a, poli- a political view or a conspiracy view. A lot of the people who the lack of objectivity within it is crazy. So no matter, it's about no matter what you believe be aware that, that no matter how much evidence that you have for your theories or whatever, or lack thereof, there's going to be an, an army of people who disagree with you. So it's just about people, it's about recognising that your truth is yours and not everybody else's. And it was just playing with different ideas within that, if that makes sense. But of course, those ideas just happen to be the ones that, you know, garner the biggest forehead smack <laughs> from from a lot of us, you know, it's <laughs> those instances. But I'm not. But I'm not. But, but even within the song, I'm not even. I'm not. Even, it's not as if I'm having a go against anybody's belief systems. I, I appreciate when people question everything. Everybody should question everything. It's just the the only issue I've got is the when people don't rationalise it, or when people don't take into account that that other people might possibly disagree with them without shouting them down. Opinions are like castles. Everybody's got one. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I also want to quickly ask about Head in the Clouds because because uh, you wrote that about insomnia. Is that is that right? Yes. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I, all the songs are about multiple things, but there's a there's usually a running theme of something underneath it. Yeah. Reading that you had been up for three days, like. What is that? Like, I, you know, I've had plenty of sleepless nights in my life, but the idea of really being awake for three days, it has to be like a, what do they call it? Just dream wake uh, scenario. Yeah. I used to do it intentionally to get myself into, like, I've never slept. My mum's never slept either. Even when I was a kid, I used to stay up all night and then and then refuse to go to school when I was a kid, say I was, saying that I wasn't well. But the, the song in itself is about, it's obviously about insomnia and trying to navigate life because usually you're staying up all night boring as fuck worrying about trying not to wake people up wake the house up and then worrying about doing something the next day like something important like a gig or going to work or whatever and then within the song it's about something it's it's a kind of negative outlook that comes from that because if you stay up for three days you end up you're not the most positive person in the world but within the song there's a, a, a there's a positive starts to appear and it kind of overcomes a negative, and then it's only at the end of the song do you realise it's a kind of love story hidden beneath the kind of the context of the song. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah definitely. And it's it's just another one of those journeys that kind of happens, you know, that we were talking about before. A bit of uh, you think you're going one direction, and then and then here we go down another path. Uh, I, I do love that. Uh, I um I'll wrap up though with with. What the first thing we see if we buy the physical product, and that's the artwork. And I think there's a there's a couple different covers, but it, it does look to sort of the one with all of the boys on it. That's the one I really want to hit on here because it looks like that's we're supposed to go somewhere with that. I I, I wanted to ask where exactly are we supposed to go when we see this artwork, and how does it speak to what we're hearing on the record? Well, there's t- there's two there's there's a vinyl cover. Which is the mother and child at the high rise flats, which is a kind of the kind of 
gives the idea of it's going to be a tough journey out from where they are. Because everybody starts off, everybody's dealt a different hand where they have to work from a different situation. And the one with the bot, the the kind of CD and the the one that's on the you know online stuff is a boy the boys with the bonfire. Obviously, there's a connection with the bonfire, but there's something about that image. There's a boy looking across. There's a boy looking behind them. They're all looking in different directions, and you can tell that just the way they're dressed, it's from the sixties. You can tell that they're up to no good, but they're still the level of innocence because of the age of it there. So it was playing with the idea of the balance between innocence and getting into a bit of trouble. They're really great images. The bonfire as well. The bon- the whole idea of the bonfire is something that my, I've got a mate called the Shaman, and he always used to talk about building your own bonfire. That's what he used to say to me. Just build the bonnie. We call it a bonnie in Glasgow. Build the bonnie. And then any time that, any time that I'm, I'm in, I'm kind of spiritually troubled, I go up and have a smoke with him and kind of talk it over. And he tells me in, in no uncertain terms but like what to do. And usually it's pour petrol on the body, add wood to the body, and just build it, build it bigger. Even though I don't, I don't want to. It's a man that speaks in kind of analogies and metaphor. It's a metaphor. It seems to have uh, been sage advice, though. It seems to have worked out well. Well, it's it's, it's burning now, isn't it? It's roaring. Well, it, it is a great <laughs> record. Uh, I, I love what you're doing, and I know so many people out there are are so enjoying what you're doing. I appreciate even the the fact that you know that your intentions, what your intentions are with the music. I, I think I love that just as much as the music. So, Jerry, I, I want to thank you so much for, for writing the music you're writing and, and putting it out the way you're putting it out, and, and especially also for, for taking the time to talk about it today. I, I really appreciate it, man. Do you know, I really appreciate the fact that you get it. There's not many people get it, man. I really appreciate the fact that you appreciate it and you understand things because there's not, there's not many people that do and cheers for that anytime man anytime I'll, I'll be listening for for whatever comes next and and hopefully eventually catching one of these uh fame shows that uh you know everyone speaks so highly of <laughs> i can't wait to see one well i'll be in america soon well god willing if the world starts turning again i will be back in america and you can come well, say we'll sort you out come to the gig you can see the mayhem unfold <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait, ma'am. Uh, thanks so much again for taking the time today. It's been a real pleasure. Cheers, brother. Peace out. Talk to you soon. And my thanks, Jerry Cinnamon. The brand new album is called The Bonnie. Do check it out. If you haven't already, there's a good chance you will very, very soon. I do promise you that. Thanks to you for checking out the interview, too. Again, if you're not already a subscriber and you want to keep up with what we're doing here, we do put out new interviews every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. We'd love to keep you updated with what we got going on. You can find us at iTunes and Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube. Just type in Kyle Meredith with subscribe. And we'll take care of the rest. After that, head to WFPK.org. That's where I do a show Monday through Friday at 6 p.m. Eastern, an hour full of song premieres, music news, anniversary spins, and bonus interviews. Again, that's WFPK. PK.org. Consequence of Sound has your music and film news. You can find me on just about any social media platform as well, uh, at Kyle Meredith. Hopefully you'll follow and like in the appropriate places. That does it for another edition. I'm Kyle Meredith. I'll see you next time. Consequence Podcast Network. Hey, I'm Jen, and I love horror movies. I'm Mikey. I'm dead inside, and I also love horror movies. And we really like to torture our friend Todd, because he hates horror movies. That I do. And that's why they call me the horror virgin. <laughs> that's the only reason we call him that. I'm not, no it's, other reasons at all. <laughs> you not oh, at all. Lengi. Whatever. So every, <laughs> <laughs> every week, we take him through the encyclopedia of horror, the good, the bad, the ridiculously Jack Frost. <laughs> and then we make fun of it, more or less. Or explain its deceptive feminism oh. yeah exactly that's what i do that's my thing <laughs> <laughs> and i'm the funny one <laughs> our episodes drop on monday so check us out